There you go. Let it sink in. Practice it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Let's take a look down. Okay, same story. Annotate all. Uh, here's a term. Here's a term. Here's a term. Here is a term, a big term. So I count one, two, three, four terms. Let's look at the degree. Okay, this has an exponent of one. This b has an exponent of one. One plus one is two. So this term has a degree of two. This variable has a degree of two also, because this a is to the second power. It's squared. This term has a degree of five, and this term has a degree of five plus six, which is 11. Okay, so this one wins out for sure. We see that 11 is the highest degree of our polynomial. Therefore, 11 is the degree. This is an 11th degree polynomial. All right, now let's write it in descending order. So obviously, we see that that big 11th degree term is the biggest. So let's write that out. Negative 13a to the fifth, b to the sixth, plus 4a to the fifth, uh, minus 5a squared, plus 6ab. No, it does not matter in what order we write these terms because their degrees are the same. And so therefore, it's up to your discretion as to what order you want to arrange those terms in. All right, let's look at number eight. Simplify. Couldn't have been stated any more clear, so let's simplify. OK, guys, students, pupils, these this is nothing new. We're just adding like terms. We're adding and subtracting like terms with maybe a little bit of distribution thrown in. Question, does this plus sign, does this addition sign impact, impact, does this addition sign impact any of the terms inside of this parentheses? Now, you all said no because you all reasoned that I was asking that question looking for a negative answer. So I will follow up and ask you, why does it not impact any of those terms? Yeah, a little bit trickier, huh? Well, the reason it doesn't impact any of those terms is because you can think of this as just having like a little positive 1 in front of it. Does multiplying anything by a positive 1 affect that anything? Is 3xy times 1 still 3x plus y? 3xy. Is negative 6y times 1 still negative 6y? Yes. So let's just rewrite this. 2xy plus 5x plus 3xy minus 6y. OK, now let's look for some like terms. Uh, I see an xy term and a 3xy term. So that's 5xy. I see a 5x and a negative 6y. Those are not like terms, not the same variable. So let's just copy them down. Plus 5x minus 6y. Final answer, because there are no more like terms to add. So all I did here was I just recopied these terms right down there, and I distributed this positive 1, or, or I just recognized that this positive sign has no impact on any of the terms in this parentheses, so I just copied these down also. Then I looked for like terms, that's how I got the 5xy, and then I just copied down all the miscellaneous terms that have no uh, pairing. All right, let's move right on. Let's move along. Let's move along. All right, numbers nine and ten. Okay, numbers 9 and 10, uh, let's turn on our pen tool. Okay, good, no, distribu no distribution necessary or necessary. I see no grouping symbols, I see no parentheses, so there's nothing to distribute. All we need to do is look at our terms and combine them. Okay, so here's an x squared. We have five, negative 5 squares here, and we have negative 3 squares here. So negative 5 squares minus 3 squares is negative 8 squares. All right, there's a cube, 
and there's a 4x so and I'll write this in descending order so I'll write 4x cubed which has no other like term in here and then I'll tack on our positive 4x at the very end and this is our final answer very straightforward because it is our final answer because there's no more simplifying we can do because none of these terms we cannot subtract or add any of these because they do not have like terms now we could easily multiply them but I see no multiplication going on on there I just see subtraction and addition alright number 10 let's take a look at you question is there anything we need to distribute in number 10 answer yes there is there's plenty of there's plenty of opportunities for distribution let's take a look a long hard look at that negative sign the impact that that negative sign has is like multiplying this all by a negative one and the effect that a negative one has on these terms is by changing the sign that's in front of the term so let's see what that looks like alright so since there's you know there's just a positive outside of here these terms are not changed so that's a negative 3x still plus 7 okay this is a positive 13x squared so minus 13x squared negative times a negative is a positive so that's positive 2x now let's look for like terms okay um, I'll look at my degree of my negative 13x squared I see no other x squareds here so I'll just copy down my negative 13x squared let's look at our x's I see a negative 3x and I see a positive 2x so that when we combine those negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1x and then finally we just tack on our positive 7 there and that is our final answer multiply the following polynomials following polynomials very very good very good very good uh, uh, I wonder what polynomial actually derives from my guess is that it derives from Latin poly meaning many nomial meaning name nomen nomenis is a name uh, anyway my internet's super slow, so we'll get that up soon enough. Let's turn on our pen tool here. Okay, double distribution. I'm going to use just the FOIL method, the most efficient method. Uh, uh, on a few of these, I'll use the box method. Uh, in fact, I'll use both on 12 and 12 alone. I will use the FOIL method and the box method. So, d, d times d is d squared d times 3 is 3 d okay 2 times d is a positive 2 d and 2 times 3 is a positive 6 so let's just add down d squared plus 5 d plus 6 so simple enough. That's the FOIL method. That's the FOIL method. We do our, and the reason it's called FOIL because we do our firsts, D times 3. Then the ones on the uh, outside, D times 3. Then we do the ones on the inside, 2 times D. Then we do the num ones on, the, out on the, the last terms, 2 times 3. Those are our last terms. FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. And I promised you I'd use the box method, and I will not disappoint. We can draw a box here. There's our other box. There's another box. So let's say this is D plus 2. Okay. So I just took care of that length times D plus 3. So the area of this box would be D squared. The area of this box would be 2D. The area of this box would be 3D. And the area of this box would be six so we see that d squared corresponds to that d squared 2d plus 3d is 5d plus six so this expression represents the area of this box all right let's uh... let's go ahead and move along 2a times 3a 6a 